Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have three sparkling wines on my left-hand side uh, from Francia Corta in uh, north... Uh, is it, does it qualify as northwest? I suppose I think of it as north-central Italy. It's just to the left of Lake Garda, if you want your geographical pointers precisely. Um, Francia Corta is... Um, it's um, well, I, I, they they hate it when they say they, you say it's the Italian take on champagne, but it's method champenoises uh, and, uh, and the classic champagne grapes. Actually, not quite the classic champagne grapes. The ones that they tend to use are Chardonnay, uh, Pinot Bianco, and um, uh, and Pinot Noir. Uh, so I've got three of them, and I will dig in and um, see where I get to. First one, I've got La Montina Brut. I think it's a non-vintage. I can't see a vintage on here anyway. Uh, anywhere, but um, anyway, let, let's just dig in. It smells crisp and toasty. It smells, um, the, the, there is this uh, slightly bready um, uh, character coming up, but there's also uh, this ripe edge of fruit, dried apricots, uh, a little bit of pineapple. When I think about um, my experience with French Quarter in, uh, in the past, it, um, I, for some, for some people find champagne a bit harsh. This, it, we're a bit further south here, it's a bit warmer, so you get grapes that are a little bit riper and slightly lower in acidity, so it's uh, probably a more user-friendly wine. So I, I think I'm going to, this is going to be quite, quite rich and mouth-filling, but with this precise dry finish. A little bit of almond character. Um, uh, it smells. Like, I'm not sure. Um, I, I think the regulations are for uh, uh, non-vintage that it's got to be uh, a minimum of. Um, um, I think it's got to have at least 18 months on on lees before they do the disgorging, and it's got to be at least um, to like 25 months old before before they can release it. This feels like it's on the young side. There's still almost a residual, even like bubblegummy edge of um, a fermentation that's going on there. Um, I like it. It's not um, it's not hugely complex, but it's a it's, it's a nice drink. Yeah, this bready character, this, this slight edge of confection. And um, warm, juicy, this and this uh, nutty, nutty dried fruit character. Next one, uh, also a brute, uh, also non-vintage. Uh, this one looks from the back like it's been it was bottled in February 14. Uh, so it's uh, we are now um, about 14 months, 15 months later than that. So um, it's had not only whoops, I've got a little bit of the previous one in there. Um, it, it will not only have had its uh, requisite 25 months of aging before it was. Uh, uh, before it had its final cork put in, but it's had another year or so in bottle to calm down. Let's see what that's done to it. Oh, I better tell you what it is, haven't I? Um, so it's um, Enrico Ratti. Does he say uh, no Gatti? Um, they, they've got, I've got a slightly ripped label here. Uh, Enrico Gatti er, Erbusco Brut. Um, so I don't know where, whether Erbusco is the vineyard, um, but uh, like the previous one, twelve and a half percent alcohol. I think yeah, both twelve and a half percent alcohol. Anyway, I'm gonna get onto it now. And this smells a slightly more grown-up wine. There's a drier, um, firm, firm is the wrong word, but it feels like there's going to, it's going to have a more precise bite of uh, both acidity and uh, age has given it this little bit of a toasty softness, but also uh, some of the dried fruit character that, that was there. But this little bit of bottle development, it's going slightly funky, a little bit of mushroomy character, not cork mushroom or anything like that, but... Um, yeah, a nice funky edge here, and that's lovely. Um, and more mature than the previous one in a, a couple of ways. Um, it's uh, certainly it's older, um, so you're getting a little bit of um, almost like mushroomy development uh, going on there. Uh, but also more mature in in terms of it being a more grown up wine. Hasn't got that confected edge of the previous one. Um, uh, the age, what it's done is that the, the yeasty character uh, has come more to the fore. I don't know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's had more time in bottle before it was disgorged either. Uh, but um, it's almost like if you get, um, if you imagine a slightly fatty bread dough uh, with with the uh, dried fruits in there, and so you're getting this yeastiness, this slight brioche character, um, but also um, things like the crystallised pineapple, a bit of orange peel. Uh, and uh, dried apricot in there, and then this citrus freshness uh, cleaning up the finish, leaving your mouth extremely satisfied and wanting more. I think I, I better have, have some more because I've got another one to uh, uh, to go. But um, very grown up wine, and uh, I do like that a lot. Final wine, uh, Baroni Pizzini, uh, Francia Corta Satin, two thousand and ten. So uh, first of all, it's a, it's a vintage wine. 
Uh, I think uh, if for the non-vintage, I think it's 18 months. It's got to have at least 18 months on lees and seven months further in bottle. Uh, for the if it's a vintage wine, uh, it's got to have had 30 months on lees and then seven months. So you can't sell it before it's uh, just over three years old. Uh, and the other one that's got is satin. Uh, I think for satin, it's got to be. Uh, I don't think you can have Pinot Noir in there. Um, so it's uh, just Chardonnay or Pinot uh, or Pinot Bianco. And it's slightly, uh, not quite as fizzy, lower pressure than uh, reg regular Franciacorta. Um, what, um, a, in, in Champagne, they used to have a, a um, category called Cremel, uh, which was uh, yeah, lower pressure in the bottle than, than regular Champagne, but they've, they've stopped using that now. I'm not sure what they use instead of uh, Cremel in Champagne now for those, low, uh, uh, those lower pressure wines. Anyway, we get on to this wine. It's funny; it doesn't smell quite as uh, mature as the um, um, uh, as the previous one. Uh, what I'm getting is a slightly um, preserved lemon character coming through. Uh, it's uh, more on that citrus fruit rather than the um, rather than the, um, the, the the apricots and the pineapples that uh, I was getting. I was getting on on the previous ones. It smells. Um, it, it does smell quite developed, but um, it doesn't smell quite as grown up as the previous one. Let's see whether I taste it. Whether that's so. And yes, that slightly confected lemon jelly character coming through. Um, it um, it has more in common with the with the first of these of uh, this trio rather than than the second. Uh, I like uh, its edge of freshness. The, so so the, what the the feeling I'm left with is a precise lemony acidity. But um, in terms of complexity of flavours, it seems a little bit on the simple side. It's it's a nice drink, but. Um, for complexity, I think the uh, uh, the previous one is is the one that uh, that uh, that really does stand out. Um, so good, uh, but um, the previous one is uh, is a real star. So I think uh, I might go off and uh, have a glass or two of that. See you soon.